Hi, sweet friend. Welcome. My name is Walter Voloshin Smith. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. I wanted to do a series on Texas wildflowers. So I had recently a workshop where the selected theme was painting these flowers. And I got so inspired that I thought, well, along from just researching them, I wanted to do a few tutorials of how to paint them. So this first part, we're going to cover Blue Bonnet, which is the official Texas flower. And I'm gonna show you how to paint it in two different styles. And then we're going to paint a Texas thistle. And then finally, a Texas fire wheel. So this is gonna be probably um, a couple of parts because I wanna cover a few more Texas wildflowers, uh, but we'll just get started with these three. The first Texas wildflower that I'd like to focus on is the blue bonnet and I want to show you two different approaches of how I painted it. But before we do the flowers, I want to take a brief moment to kind of practice a couple of the brush strokes that we'll be doing in that flower. So I am using a round brush number eight and let's see, I'm going to get my water, I'm going to dip my brush in water. And grab a little bit of blue. All right, so the main kind of brush mark that I want you to focus on is going to be, we're gonna be using the brush as sort of like a little stamping tool. So I'm gonna press down and then press again. So you're pressing down and then you're pressing kind of it almost resembles like a heart shape and actually the more the quicker that you do these little brush marks the better the look so ideally you don't want them to look super precise but more kind of like abstracty so the more variation there's in there the better it'll look and it's okay if you know maybe you have a series of these brush marks together so Basically, I just want to encourage you to kind of disassociate from, oh, this this doesn't look exactly like the petal that I'm looking at, but more so focus on like the general look and feel of it. So in this example here, these, for example, are kind of more so like a series of little brush stamp marks. So you'll, you'll notice that they're very kind of, they're, they vary in different shapes and sizes and it's really about a matter of like working fairly fast so that you don't overthink this process. And then this one was mostly done in the style where there's like, you really can't tell the different little hearts, but then I went in and filled in a few of the spots with just like individual little brush marks. All right, so we'll get started with, I'll show you the very first one. First style of a blue bonnet. So that one, uh, I think I'm gonna start it about here. So let's see, I'm gonna do, grab a little bit more blue here, but I'm just doing like, a series of little heart shapes. It looks like I picked up a little bit of green from my palette, but that's okay. And the idea is that you want you want the the blue bonnet, you know, to kind of um, decrease in, in the width as you go towards the top. So you just you can just like. Add a few layers here and then fill in some of the empty spots, if you will. So it's really just about a matter of like using this as a little, using your brush as a stamping tool. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna grab some green. Gonna do my stem. And then the leaves for a blue bonnet, they're kind of like gonna do 
elongated so we're pressing down and we're dragging the brush press down and drag press down and drag so typically they'll have like um, a series of like five little leaves that are all connected at the base right here um, so that's roughly you know a blue bonnet leaf which it's okay if it's not super precise um, but it does have like at least five of these little guys so you know if you use your brush as a little stamping tool it totally works and then another thing too um, as you're working on your blue bonnet you can go in e either with the same shade of blue or a different slightly darker blue you can drop in into a few areas so that it has a little bit more dimension. I think I might actually add some, some splatters here because it's super fun to do that. Keeps, keeps things fun and loose. Throughout the stem. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna use my brush a little stamping tool to add the leaves and then one more there we go so that's essentially like the structure of the flower and then I'm gonna go into my blues and for that again I'm just gonna like roughly do these little heart shapes but I don't want them to like, I purposely want them to not look like true hearts because, you know, I'm not painting hearts. I'm just painting several petals that come together. And then I'm just going to add a little bit, a few of these little petals right here, kind of hiding, um, hiding the stem at the top. So I want to make sure this looks kind of full. So like you can see some of the flowers on the other side. And it's okay if some of the green bleeds into this. It'll just make it more, more interesting that way. And let's see if I'm going to add a darker blue in here as well. Just like a couple, in a couple of areas. There we go. If some of these are too dark, you can always lift off. So I'm gonna basically lift off a little bit. So I press down on the brush and I lift it off. That way you can make sure that, you know, if you added a little bit too much pigment and you want it to be more, because um, the shape will look more interesting when you have areas that are lighter and are dar darker. Uh, whereas if it's all dark, it's just kind of be a little bit overwhelming. And let's see, I can also kind of work through these little brush marks. So the clean brush, I'm just smoothing out these leaves. There we go. So here is the comparison between these two different styles. This one is a little bit more loose and kind of playful. And this one is a touch bit more like realistic like the actual blue bonnet flower, but still fairly loose and fun. Our next flower is a fire wheel. So it's gonna look something like that, but actually I found a better photo, a better reference photo for it. So. I'm gonna use this as my example because I think this looks a little bit more realistic to the flower. So, whereas the one that I painted has way too much spaces in between the petals. So I am going to roughly, you know, adjust this, but uh, we'll get started with, let's see. I'm gonna do some yellow okra for for the center of the flower. 
just gonna do a little circular shape something like this and then on the outside we have kind of like a dark brown color so I'm gonna grab some brown from my palette and I'm just gonna do add like I'm gonna do kind of like a little almost a uh, stippling motion so I'm barely you know I'm repetitively touching the surface of the paper with the brush and I realized that some of this brown is gonna go into this yellow ochre and that's okay that that was my intention and then I'm gonna do a few little few little lines that are these are like the clusters of petals so these little lines will contain um, about three to four little petal clusters so it's gonna look something like this and then let's see for the petals uh, we have a red and a yellow so I'm gonna use so I'm gonna try this red I uh, might add just a touch of orange in here. Alright, so then I'm gonna... I remember each of these little little uh, marks has a cluster of three petals. So I'm gonna press down, lift, and I'll press down again and lift press down and lift and I am I did switch to uh, brush size number six because these petals are a little bit a smaller area so I want to have a smaller brush so I can do the little details a little bit easier so I'm gonna repeat this so pressing down dragging just a little bit and then lifting off Pressing down, lifting off, press. And let's see, pressing down, lifting off. So now I'm going to go in with some yellow and these are gonna be the very like pointy tips of these petals so again I'm just like adding a little bit of pressure and doing kind of like two strokes two brush strokes for each of these petals and it's okay if some of the red goes into the yellow. You know, to avoid that, you would just need to make sure that the red dries first and then you add the yellow, but it's okay if it, if it kind of uh, bleeds in a little bit, makes it look more fun. And actually I might add just, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of red and I'm just gonna make some of these petals a little fuller so I'm just adding like a little brush mark I basically I don't want um, to have a lot of blank space in between these petals so that's why I'm adding I'm kind of extending the shapes a little bit by just adding another brush mark and of course we can clean off the brush and we can lift off little tiny highlights but you got to remember to clean the brush every time and sometimes in even you could you could add like a little very thin line kind of in the center of each of these petals to give it uh, to, to make it look like there's like a little fold in that petal 
and then back to the center so I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the yellow okra and I'm just gonna kind of blend this in a little bit if, if it became too dark for you you can always clean off the brush and lift off a little bit but I think I like the way this turned out I might add a little bit more of the brown on the outside on the edge of the circle in the middle in the middle right here all right and then the final step will be to add a stem so I'm not applying a lot of pressure just very little and then I'm gonna do a little leaf shape so I'm pressing down here and I think I'm gonna make it round so I can just use my brush to round it off let me make it a little bit wider oops like this and I'm gonna clean up the brush and lift off just a little bit of a highlight so it doesn't look super flat compared to to the petals so compared to my first example that I tried um, I think this one looks much better because you know there's no empty spaces but this one actually I wanted to show you that uh, both of these you know resemble like the flower and it just depends on what your preference is so I think here I went a little too into into the direction of oh I want to make sure it looks like that flower so real more realistic whereas this one is still fun it was definitely quicker to paint but it's the same result you know it's just sure like the center might be a little bit larger but that's okay it's really the same flower it's just two different styles and I want to encourage you I wanted to show you that it's okay if yours look like one or the other or maybe neither of these versions because that just means that you put yourself into it so it resembles you know your style and your take on that flower the next texas wildflower we will do is a texas thistle so it will look something like this and let's see we're gonna get started with the green so i am going to mix in kind of like a cooler green so I don't have a cooler green but I can make it cooler by adding a little bit of blue into this green that I have and then I'm gonna add tons of water so it's not super dark all right and then the we're gonna do the bottom portion of the flower first so that's going to resemble kind of like a upside down arch shape or like a letter U you know kind of like this so um, in this example mine turned out a little bit different but wanted to show you so the shape general shape is kind of like half of an oval uh, mine goes upward a little bit but that's okay it's just you know a different take on that flower so let's see I'm gonna fill in this color and I'm gonna lift off a little bit of a highlight on the left here so I'm gonna press down my brush lift off and I might add just a bit more of the color some green on the opposite side to kind of punch up the contrast between this lighter area and the darker one okay and then we're gonna do the stem so that doesn't have to be super straight it can be a little bit wavy and then the leaves are going to extend so again using brush number six because I want to make these little details 
Um, so I'm just kind of roughly making these wavy lines to represent the leaves on the thistle. Let's see one more. It's basically like you have a main shape and there's like a few little wavy line that extend from it. Kind of like this. Now for the thistle part, I'm going to use a magenta because that's kind of the color. You can also use a purple, um, any pink, you know, you can mix a pink with blue. That's a nice combo as well, but I just already have some magenta in my palette, so why not use it? And actually, I'm going to add a little bit of water so it's kind of light in value, so it's not super saturated. And the way that we're going to do the thistles is we're not going to apply a lot of pressure, but we are going to do like this flicking motion, like away from ourselves. So it's going to be something like this. So very quick and actually gonna dry off my brush a little bit on a towel because I want so you see instantly since I dried it off the these brush marks are lighter and I want a variation in these thistle marks because it'll make my flower look more interesting and it'll just look like you know the thistles in the back are a little bit lighter so because they're further away from where we're looking and anytime we have a nice color and contrast so the darkness and the lightness it kind of is like a nice addition and then in between these lines you can add tiny little marks definitely try to try to work as fast as you can because you will just overthink the process and just have fun with this i think this is a really fun one because you get to practice this motion of like flicking and like doing these quick brush marks and then if you want to add a little bit more of like a darker value you know i'm going back into the magenta where it's not as saturated or like not as diluted with water so you can really see some of these darker areas uh, and let's see maybe for the leaves I can go back in and add a few little marks so that like it looks more interesting um, but I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this one so in my example I had the pink Kind of bleed into the green and i really like the way this turned out as it's a total accident so this didn't happen here but i just wanted to show you that if it does happen it's totally okay like it will just add to the shape um and actually i think let's see you can add a few little marks here Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, because then that looks a little bit more fun and loose. Oh, and uh, one last thing. If you grab a little bit of green and go in very, very lightly, so barely touching the surface, you can add the little um, thistle parts that are on, on this bottom portion of the flower. And these are just like tiny little lines. Um, and it adds like a little bit of a texture, so it makes it more fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I will continue to create fun and approachable watercolor tutorials. See you in the next one.